So this is part two of a deep dive into Superbase Auth. Last time we looked at these JWTs that Superbase uses, uh, the Anon key and the service role. Uh, the Anon key is the one that's safe to put in your client and the service role is the one that you should not put in, in your front end client. Uh, so what we're gonna do this time is we're gonna use the Anon key and we're gonna create a new table we're going to restrict access so that the anon key can only read from that table. Uh, so we're going to design a table called leaderboard, which only can be written to using the service role key, but can be read from using the anon key. So the first thing to do is to come to the SQL editor. So let's create our leaderboard table. So we'll do create table leaderboard. Uh, and we'll have two things. We'll have a user ID, which will be of type UUID. Um, and this will reference, references auth.users and cannot be null. Now this auth.users is a table that Superbase maintains for you. So whenever a new user signs up, let's go to the authentication tab here. You'll see I've already signed up as a user to my own service and we have this UUID. This user automatically gets injected into the users table in the auth schema. And we can see that here, select all from auth.users. We'll be able to see that we have one user uh, entered Superbase.io with an encrypted password when it was confirmed, authenticated role, all this stuff. So, so this is maintained for you by Superbase, so you don't really need to touch uh, this auth schema. So going back to our table creation, that's the user ID, which we'll pull from auth.users. And we'll also have a score. Uh, so score will be an int, and we'll say that it cannot be null. So if we run this, we'll get a new success, and we can go and look at the documentation for our new table in the API documentation here. You'll see it pops up on the left here, leaderboard, and Superbase has generated for us uh, a bunch of different ways of interacting with, with this new table. And so for this, I'm going to switch to the bash examples here. And I'm going to use this simple uh, browser extension called rested uh, to interact. Since this is a deep dive, I thought we can bypass the JavaScript and go straight for the HTTP raw endpoint. So you get a little bit of a feel of how Superbase works. Uh, behind the scenes. First, we want to select from our leaderboard table. And we actually want to select all. And we need two headers. We need one, which is an API key. Now the API key will get you past the API gateway. And for this, we want to go and grab the Anon key, something like there. And then the second header we need is the authorization header. And this will be the one that's used by Superbase to determine whether you have access to this specific um, piece of information. So I'm also gonna paste in here the Anon key. Um, so don't forget to put bearer at the front of here. So when we send that request, we should see that we get an empty result because there's, there's nothing in here yet. And so we wanna know how to insert some data. We go back to the API, down to leaderboard, flip to bash, and scroll down to insert rows. So we'll see here, we just need to do a post to slash leaderboard and with a content type 
application JSON and we want to insert some data. So let's put in uh, content type application JSON, make it a post. And then we can add our values here. So the, the, the two things that we want are, of course, the user ID, which is a UUID, and a score. Now I'm going to head over to authentication section and grab my user ID here, throw it in, and give myself a score of 100. Now I'm still using the anon key and we haven't enabled any Postgres policies yet. So this should work. There we go, we got a 201. And if we head over to the SQL editor, we should be able to see select all from the leaderboard that the right was successful. Now we want to restrict this ability so let's head over to authentication. We go to the policies section, wait for the table to load. And when we click this padlock here, what we're doing is we're locking down the entire table. So we're saying now, if anyone's trying to use the anon key to access this table for any reason, they won't be able to, to get the data out. And we can confirm this here. So if we try and do a right, let's put a new row in, same user ID and a new score of 200. You'll see that we get a 403, new row violates row level security policy for this table, which is quite useful. And likewise, if we go to the history here and we do a get on select all on the table, we'll see that the row doesn't doesn't get returned. Um, and just to show you, let's disable load of security. Run this again, and you'll see how we get the data. So what we want to do here is enable row level security and write a policy which allows anyone with the anon key to read from the table but not write. So we say Anyone should be able to select, let's give it a policy name, and on can read leaderboard. And for the definition, we'll say auth.role. This is a function that we insert into the auth schema for you. The, the possible options here so far are auth.role, auth.email and auth.uid. So we're going to go for auth.role. And we're going to say if the auth.role is equal to an odd, then let them read from the table. We see that we now have this policy inserted. So now we should be able to read from the table. OK, good. And we should not be allowed to write to the table. So trying to do a post, let's try and do a new score of 9999. And we'll see we get forbidden. New row violates roll up the security policy. So what we've looked at today is how to restrict the ability to read and write from a table in Postgres based on the role, in this case, the MR key that we give to every supervised project. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to do a similar thing, but we'll use the user's JWTs, so the user's individual access tokens, and how to restrict access to users based on the data that they should or shouldn't be allowed to access.